the commingling of tourism, of entertainment, and of shopping kind of erases the distinction between uh, consumption and other social activities. Um, to the extent that um, we're not sure anymore um, what are social activities, what are consumption activities, and so forth. Um, uh, um, one of the things, I suppose, that became evident to us very early on is that um, music, when we're all, we're all aware of, or we're all familiar with functional music in terms of music and how music um, lubricates consumption in various different ways. Um, what we find on the streets of the audience is that all kinds of music and all kinds of sounds and even noise also works in this kind of functional sense to lubricate the process of consumption. Uh, uh, and, and so it's, it's important, I think, for us as researchers to pay attention, therefore, to the sonic environment and, and how it works in terms of the functioning of, of urban places and spaces. Uh, Bourbon Street and, and Frenchman Street were our core areas of, of interest. Uh, and if you've not been, it's worth my while, I suppose, describing those two areas. Um, before I ever went to New Orleans, before I ever learned much about New Orleans, all I had on Bourbon Street was, unfortunately, Sting's Moon Over Bourbon Street, which does not characterize Bourbon Street in any kind of meaningful way. Uh, Bourbon Street contains a plethora of bars, restaurants, strip joints, music clubs, t-shirt and souvenir shops, and as a good Irish Catholic, all I can describe as sex paraphernalia stores. Um, drinking in the street is legal 24 hours a day, and if there's a material object that encapsulates <coughs> the Bourbon Street, it's the go cup that allows you to buy a drink somewhere and take it wherever the hell you want to take it. It goes with you, you go with it. And there's no necessary reason to stop, to remain, to stay, or whatever. You just move betwixt and between. Um, Frenchman Street is different. Frenchman Street has been constructed to possess a high concentration of bars and music venues. Um, it offers up a seemingly more authentic mix of jazz and blues and other musical forms. So, certainly in the way that the, the streets of New Orleans, uh, the French Quarter and Marigny are promoted, we see distinct differences in how Bourbon Street is constructed as a kind of uh, carnival space and how Frenchman Street is constructed as a space for musicians and music lovers and music fans and so forth. So, we use Denora's notion and Atkinson's notion of the sonic ecology, essentially, um, to make sense of um, sounds and music on, uh, in, in, on Bourbon Street and, and Frenchman Street. Um, understanding that there is a rhythm to the sounds and to music on these streets. It is organized in various different ways. But also um, that... Um, it cajoles us, it seduces us, it guides us, it, it encourages us to consume in various different ways. Um, uh, so and what we were interested in is this idea of consumer subjectivity and how we are at different times and at the same time encouraged to be consumers or to be tourists, to be shoppers, and to be music fans, so different elements of consumer subjectivity vying for attention at one and the same time. In terms of methodology, we used sound walking. Um, there were two periods of data collection. There was an exploratory research uh, that happened, I got to go through Orleans twice. Um, so there was exploratory research in 2015, um, where we kind of got a feel for the place, and then in October 2016, we went back, and we essentially walked Bourbon Street and Frenchman Street, block by block, recording sounds. Um, uh, 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 and, and then um, reflecting on those sounds. So this is very much uh, still a work in progress. We're still trying to make sense of what we found while we were there. Um, but already, I think, we're beginning to unpick some, some interesting ideas. So I'm going to talk to you now about the, different, the three different subjectivities. And I'll start off by firstly talking about um, uh, the tourist 
subjectivity or the tourist version of the consumer subjectivity. So these spaces are located on Bourbon Street and particularly on Friday night in Frenchman Street. The sonic ecology in these spaces is a cacophonous mix of sound to the point of the sounds being largely indistinguishable from one another. So to a certain extent, this feels like a continuous wall of sound, which as a holistic experience is somewhat akin to noise. So sounds that are out of place, sounds that are uncomfortable, and maybe even threatening. However, a more nuanced listening provides a sensation of moving in and out of sounds as one moves through the physical space. Different pieces of recorded music and live music compete with each other for attention, and they do battle with a multitude of other kinds of sounds. For example, there are raucous voices on the street and cat calls from the balconies that line the whole way down Bourbon Street. There are sirens, there are car stereos. We observed a practice of young kids drumming on plastic buckets, which was a form of busking. It was very impressive in talent, but it was incredibly loud. And of course, there are the quintessential New Orleans second lines, which are brass band parades, which in these particular spaces of the French Quarter are mostly hired to celebrate a wedding, a birthday, an opening of a business. There is overall, most definitely, a party atmosphere. I'll play a small sound clip now to hopefully capture that sonic ecology. <laughs> Of, of Carnival and of course Mardi Gras. Um, so a bacterian place and, and time where the normal world is turned upside down by laughter and where the freakish and the grotesque are accentuated. It's a place out of time. So a place to visit but perhaps not to live. So Bourbon Street then is a place of liberties where one does what one never does. It calls to the libido with its sassy jazz and beer skin. Like wicked fingers, the dimly lit streets of saints lead to a blaze of neon that rubs up against the night. Once there, one joins the raucous crowd, moving up and down Bourbon, looking through cracked doors and dirty windows. Exchange after exchange exposes the sexually charged flirtation of the forbidden. Without a doubt, people participate, but the tourist gaze is also significant. For example, people very often watch the live bands from outside the threshold of the venues on Bourbon Street, perhaps even for two or three songs, before moving on to the next and maybe even more exciting thing. So the sonic ecology is creolized in that there are some examples of New Orleans traditional jazz and even Cajun music, and there are certainly local musicians. You know that you are in New Orleans. But these are intertwined with and somewhat dominated by global pop and rock. So, for example, after immersing oneself in Bourbon Street, the set list of classic rock songs becomes very audible to us. So Southern American songs such as Leonard Skinner's Sweet Home Alabama are really prominent. But this also includes Neil Diamond's Sweet Caroline that we just heard and Queen's Fat Bottom Girls. And these are songs that are played in different bars, but several times a night if you, as you're walking up and down Bourbon Street. In these spaces, the central focus is the street, rather than the bars and the venues themselves. Businesses are working hard to try and bring people inside, but revelers claim the street as their party zone, with music as their soundtrack, soundtrack and go cups to hold their drinks as they move along. The street is further populated by all manner of characters and performers and panhandlers, ranging from tarot card readers to topless tips for pics of women and the poet of Bourbon Street. So the second of the um, 
consumer subjectivities as that of shoppers. Now these spaces are located in retail shops on Bourbon Street that sell t-shirts, cigars and voodoo trinkets and in the art market on Frenchman Street. The sonic ecology is less noisy or boisterous. There is the chatter of shoppers and stall owners or proprietors negotiating and discussing their wares. Music does spill over from neighbouring bars and sounds infiltrate from the street, especially in the art market, which is an outdoor space and therefore has no solid walls. The sonic ecology is experienced as a compartmentalisation of sound, and the sense of moving from one type of, a, of sound to another is more pronounced. So for example, as you cross the threshold into these spaces, the sound of markets and shopping becomes dominant. So negotiations among sellers and buyers, chit chats as shoppers browse and spend time together, electronic sounds of cash registers and card machines, boxes and packages being moved and transformed, stalls being created, erected and dismantled. This is a relative quiet, but it certainly is not silence. So I'll play another clip to capture some of this. salient in these shopping spaces, specific kinds of objects are sought, which are intimately tied into and represent place. So these are mementos, attempts to capture the experience. The sonic ecology here is creolized in the sense that there is a blending of background strains of what has been called functional music with localized sounds and music coming in from neighbors. So functional music in this context is music that's used as a sales tool. It's music that encourages people to purchase, buy, for example, creating a certain kind of feeling or evoking particular images or memories. Now, this music tends to be global and generic. It's a form of sonic wallpaper that is recognized by us as shoppers the world over. And as such, it marks these spaces out as commercial spaces. And it's the sounds that spill over into these spaces that help locate these particular commercial spaces as being in your links. The third and final of the uh, consumer subjectivities is that of the music fan. These sonic ecologies are located primarily on Frenchman Street, both inside bars and on the street where buskers play in doorways and on corners and where the sounds spill out from the bars through their open doors and windows. And it can also be found in some bars on Bourbon Street, um, uh, as we have examples here, but these, we found, were often empty or even closed unless there was a live band playing. The sound is dominated by music, but it's a little more muted as the music is live and very often acoustic. And in the quietness in between the songs, the sounds that spill over from the surrounding environment help locate these spaces or scenes as being either in Bourbon Street or in Marigny. Now, work, walking down Frenchman Street is like experiencing multiple vignettes of all sorts of different styles of music through the open doors and windows of each venue. The music fades in and out again, with some sounds, like the voice or brass, brass instruments, lingering longer than others. brings forth the subjectivity of music fandom. These are spaces for highly knowledgeable, serious leisure tourists, 
um, and connoisseur tourists who are focused on their specialist areas of interest. These are also, though, a space for locals who are drawn to music, either as fans or musicians themselves. There are visible regulars in bars on Frenchman Street who listen to music and are friendly with the staff and the musicians. And in order to cater for the fact that they're a regular clientele, the, there's a greater variety of artists playing in bars throughout the week. Um, there is a sense of collaboration, but there's also some tensions that exist between locals and tourists, as evidenced by patrons in the Spotted Cat wearing Frenchman local t-shirts to demarcate themselves. So there's also a creolized sonic ecology in the sense that while much of the music is traditional New Orleans jazz, there are nods to the global. So we experienced a, a musician in um, one of the bars playing specifically to us because we were the only people listening to him, um, but he was playing us songs that were global rock songs but in very much his localized uh, influence style. So the music is infused with a sense of authenticity through the musicianship and through the persona of the bohemian artist. And we see people acting like audiences. They're clapping, they're cheering um, at the end of breaks or of sets, they're talking in between the spaces but not during the music and so on. And here we see the central, vote, the central focus as being the venue. So the street is a route rather than a destination unless the musical performance happens on the street. So just to conclude, um, we recognise that all these types of consumer subjectivities, um, it, uh, that they're all types of consumer subjectivities, and while the shopper subjectivity is most obvious, in all, th um, in all three music functions to bring forth a subjectivity, that in the end is still mediated by the marketplace. And the sonic ecology helps us different, uh, differentiate the various elements of what's going on by thinking through the sonic object, the sonic subject, the context, and also the particular sonic methodology that we use as well. Thank you very much indeed.